In section 12 of the yellow wallpaper, it's the last day in the house, and the narrator feels certain she can complete her mission. Working by moonlight and with the help of the woman behind the pattern, the narrator has removed large areas of the wallpaper. She locks the door and throws the key out the window, then begins peeling. She thinks that there are many women who come out from behind the wallpaper pattern, and that she, in fact, is one of them. She begins to creep around the wall of the room, with her shoulder rubbing into the long yellow streak she had noticed in the wallpaper earlier. John arrives and pounds on the locked door. She tells him that the key is under a plant outside and he can go and unlock the door. It's pleasant to be out in this great room and creep around as I please, she tells John. I've got out at last, she says, in spite of you and Jane, and I've pulled off most of the paper so you can't put me back. He sees her creeping around the floor and faints across her path, but she continues to creep. The final journal entry of the yellow wallpaper reveals the complete disintegration of the narrator's identity. She is so invested in the peeling off of the paper, she seems violent toward anyone else who might touch it. No person touches this paper but me, not alive. She's even tempted to jump out the window, but can't because of the bars. She notes that the bedstead is fairly gnawed and then reveals that she's the one gnawing it. I got so angry I bit off a little piece at one corner, but it hurt my teeth. These images suggest a level of madness and agitation she hasn't yet shown to the reader or John. As she finally descends into madness, she seems to merge her identity with that of the women in the wallpaper. She doesn't want to go outside because she's come to identify so much with the wallpaper. She treats the nursery as if she had escaped from the wallpaper and arrived to enjoy the large expanse of the room for the first time. It's worth noting that some readers believe that the phrase, in spite of you and Jane, is a cryptic revelation of the narrator's real name. If so, it shows that she has completely left behind her old identity. Other scholars have suggested that Jane isn't an error for Jenny, but a literary reference to Charlotte Bronte's character Jane Eyre from her novel of 1847, who helps keep a violently insane woman locked in the attic. Either way, the ending seems to equate confinement with mental instability. <laughs>